Hello, hi, welcome. So today I am incredibly excited because first of all, I'm filming a video that I've been wanting to make for quite some time now, and also a video that's been highly requested by all of you. And second, because I finally get to share with you some news that I have been sitting on for months. I have been working on this since last year, and today I finally get to announce it, and I'm just over the moon so incredibly excited. So as you already know from the title of this video, today I'm going to be talking about my all-time favorite movies and TV series. I get asked this question all the time, since I always share my favorite books and everything I love to read. I do occasionally also talk about the things that I love to watch as well, but I've never made like a full, complete list of my all-time favorites and my recommendations. I've previously made a video about my favorite TV series, Series, but I've never made one for movies and since that was a couple years ago I thought I may as well combine them into one and just share with you like my list of all-time favorites and I know a lot of you are waiting for my required reading list video that I said I would make and I promise I'm working on that video I will definitely make it but this video is gonna be my required watching list these are the prerequisites to the clockwork reader community the movies and TV shows that I absolutely adore that I feel like make up my personality and the ones that I think everyone should also at least experience because they are so good. Just the best of the best in my opinion. Part of the reason I decided to make this video today specifically is because it ties into my special announcement. And I know some of you have already guessed it because a couple people messaged me and a couple people found out about it a few months ago but were very kind and like stayed very quiet and I appreciate you for not spoiling the surprise. <laughs> Last year I was working on another very special project. Most of you already know that in 2021 I released my reading journal, the A Clockwork Reader Reading Journal, and I am I'm so ecstatic to tell you that I was lucky enough to be able to make a second journal for you all, but this time it is the A Clockwork Reader Film and Television Journal. Oh my god. <laughs> Yes, this time I made a journal for you to track all of the movies and TV shows that you watch. When my publisher approached me for like a second project to work on, I was thinking about what I wanted to do and actually while I was working on the reading journal I already had some ideas of what I wanted to do and a film and TV journal was like my number one thing that I really wanted to make because I felt like there is no journal that's specific to this. Like there aren't many reading journals to begin with either but I feel like some of those are popping up more and more now and you see a lot more of them. But I feel like there's never really been a good place to record all of the movies and TV shows you watch. Like we have Letterboxd now if you like to digitally track anything that you watch, but that's also exclusively only for movies. I felt like there was this space missing for people to just write down all of their thoughts on everything they've watched and just record and keep track of everything they watch and want to watch. And so that is how this journal came to be. Yeah, I am so excited. <laughs> I know I'm just gonna be continuously repeating myself, but truly there's nothing in me but pure excitement right now. <laughs> it is very similar to the original reading journal as you can see, the original reading journal, I did go with a different color because I had this whole like color scheme thing in my head and I really wanted to try blue with this one and I think it turned out so, so pretty. I'm obsessed with the cover. I designed the cover and I was happy with it, but then when I finally got like the actual sample and saw it with the gold foil and the blue, I think it turned out so nicely. It was better than I could have pictured. They also look beautiful together. They'll look very nice on the shelf. I'm so excited to display them finally. I haven't been able to put them up on my bookshelves because I couldn't spoil it for you all. So now that I'm rearranging my bookshelves and you all know this is gonna have a spot its own spot on the shelf along with the reading journal so yes <laughs> I'm not gonna give you a full flip through of the inside right now but I will do its own dedicated flip through video like I did for the reading journal so you can see every page so you can know what the inside content is like but I'll give you a sneak peek on some of the pages so the format is very similar to the reading journal um, but basically in this one you have up to uh, 300 movies and TV shows you can record in here we added extra space because I feel like people tend to watch more than they read sometimes so so yeah, you have plenty of space to record things. There's a lot more variation in the recording pages as well. I did a few different designs that we alternated, so it kind of like breaks up the monotony of having like the same page over and over again, which I really liked. And then yeah, obviously I tried to theme some of the pages to more movies and TV shows. The reading journal was a little bit kind of like a botanical themed, and this one I went with more of like a film and TV theme. Um, and I think it turned out pretty nicely. So yeah, you have plenty of space to record what you want to watch, what upcoming movies and shows you're excited about. So there's plenty of stuff you can do in here and plenty of space for you to be creative and make it your own. So yeah, that is 
my super exciting announcement, important information. So first of all, when will it be released? It's going to be released on June 27th, 2023. So it does come out in just a few months now. Very exciting, but also feels very surreal. <laughs> the link to pre-order will be in the description box. You can pre-order from Barnes and Noble, Amazon, um, I think Books A Million, all of them are listed in the link that I'll list there. And also I believe from Book Depository as well, if you want to order internationally, I think that's the only place you can order internationally. But yeah, I'll leave all of that information in the description box for all the pre-order links. But yes, it would mean the world to me if you pre-ordered, if you were excited about the journal. But like I said, I know a couple of you already kind of put it together and some people have told me that this was what they wanted too while I was working on the reading journal. And I was like, hmm, little do you know. I'm so excited. I'm so, so grateful to all of you. This would not exist without the success of the reading journal. So thank you so much to everyone who supported the reading journal in the first place. This, this would not be here. I would not be able to make any of these things if it hadn't been for your support. So thank you. I'm so eternally grateful and I'm so excited for you all to be able to have this in your hands as well. I can't believe I have a second thing out now, a second published work. That's very weird to say. But yes, it is now available for pre-order so please do check out those links down below. Please tag me on Instagram or tweet me or just, you know, let me know anywhere. Uh, if you do end up pre-ordering, I am so grateful to all of you. That's it for that. That's my news. So uh, we're gonna get into talking about some of my favorite movies and TV shows, which you can actually find in the reading journal. I have a page where I give some of my recommendations and list off some of my favorites. So today we're just gonna talk about some of those, not all of them. If you wanna know more of my recommendations, they're in here, but there are plenty more movies and shows I like. I decided in this video, I'm only gonna talk about my top five favorite TV shows and my top five favorite movies. It is so hard to narrow down to a top five of either of these because there's so many and depending on my mood it alternates but that's what we're gonna go with. Just know that this list is pretty flexible and it shifts around a lot so if you do want to know some more of my recommendations and favorites a lot of them are listed in the journal too so yeah anyway uh, let's start with my top five favorite TV shows because I feel like this list has changed a bit since I made my last video and some of them are the same, but some of them I've watched some new things that I've just completely fallen in love with. So coming in at number five on my list of favorite TV shows is an anime that I have talked about a lot since last year because that was when I first watched it and fell in love. And it is shockingly only one season and I debated whether or not I'd consider it like a top five favorite since it's not fully complete. But honestly, I've rewatched it so many times at this point and I can't think of something I like more than this that I want to put higher on this list because it's just that good to me. And that is Yona of the Dawn. You've all heard me gush about how much I love this anime and how much I love the manga. I've described it several times as a combination of two of my other all-time favorite TV shows, which we'll get to in a minute. But it's basically a historical fantasy series where we follow around this young princess whose life is entirely uprooted and she has to flee her kingdom with her bodyguard and she is basically on the run and then she meets some friends along the way who have to help her on her journey. It's full of a lot of action and adventure great fight scenes, um, and also like the greatest slow burn romance ever. So I eat this show up. It's just so good. But I think my favorite thing about it is how well written and well developed the characters are, particularly Yona. She's fierce, she's independent, but she also depends on people when she needs to. She knows when to ask for help. She's constantly growing. She's constantly getting better and better. And you see her grow. You see her learn as the story goes on. And it's just so incredibly well written. And I love it. All of the characters are incredible, truly. But it's just such a well written written show, such good romance, and such good world building and storytelling. So yeah, absolutely had to include this show. It has easily become one of my all-time favorites. Um, so if you haven't watched it yet, you absolutely must. <laughs> Okay, next on my list is another new show that I watched last year for the first time. People have been telling me for years, Hannah, you are going to love this show. You have to watch it. And I put it off and put it off because I I just, I don't know. I was so worried that I wasn't going to like it, but I was wrong. I adored it. And that is Anne with an E. This is also the only live action show on my list of all time favorites. You will notice I really love animated shows and movies. I do love a lot of live action ones as well, but the animated ones really just hit for me. So it's rare when something that's not animated it ends up in my top five, but this show is that good. Anne with an E is an adaptation of the book Anne of Green Gables, but it takes a lot of liberties and it strays away from certain parts of the book and it makes certain plot points a bit darker, a bit more grown up, I would say. The book is definitely a book that's written for children. This one kind of goes a little bit deeper into Anne's character as well as all the other characters, so it's definitely for an older audience than the original novel. It's a story about family, about friendship and found family too, and it's just so 
beautiful. It's heartbreaking. It's really painful sometimes in the show, especially some of the traumas she experiences are depicted a bit more explicitly. So sometimes it's a little hard to watch. Um, but overall, it is such a happy, wholesome, just heartwarming, beautiful show. This was one of those things that I watched where I was like, oh, it's time to make this my entire personality now. I was ready to go read fan fiction. I was ready to rearrange my entire room and dress head to toe cottagecore. <laughs> when I watched it, it was just that all consuming to me. And the aesthetic of the show is also extremely beautiful. The way it's filmed is gorgeous. The soundtrack is gorgeous and the costuming, like everything, everything about it is so, so beautiful. And it's such good storytelling and good writing as well. I read of Green Gables years ago, but quite honestly, I barely remember anything about it. And I think I wasn't like super into the book. So that's why I think I put sh watching the show off a little bit too, because I didn't think I would be that interested, but I was so, so wrong. This is truly one of the most important shows to me now. It just means so much to me. And I really think more people need to watch it. I believe it has four seasons. The last season, while it does have an ending, it was, I think, prematurely canceled. So it was a little bit disappointing. Like the, I think the writers knew it was going to be canceled. So they did give it an ending for sure. It's not gonna leave you off on like some terrible, terrible cliffhanger where you're just never gonna get to know what happens, but you definitely can tell that they had more story left in them. Parts of the fourth season, I will say, are like not my favorite uh, with certain storylines that they decided to explore. But overall, as a whole, I think the show is so incredible and so worth watching. There are so many moments that just, oh my God, they hurt to think about. And also Anne's character, I think is one of the characters I relate to the most in a way that I just wasn't expecting, but her imagination and her like creativity and her dramatics, I just, I could relate to on such a deep, deep personal level and I adored it. So yeah, absolutely. If you have yet to watch Anne with an E, please do, that show is beautiful. More people should watch it. And I still think we deserve more. We deserve more seasons of it. There's so much more we could do, so much more we could explore. <laughs> okay, coming in at number three on my list of favorites. This might surprise some of you because I have said that it could have been in the number one spot, but officially decided that it's not. But number three is Fruits Basket, the 2019 version. Oh my god, did this show take over my life? <laughs> I started watching this, I think, I think at the end of 2020 or maybe beginning of 2021, I can't exactly remember. The years are all blurring together. <laughs> but I'd never watched the original anime and I didn't really know anything about it. I just saw people talking about it because the last season was airing and I was like, okay, I'm curious, I'm intrigued. I wanna know what this show is about. It is such a weird, strange show. I can't emphasize that enough. If you're not into anime to begin with, I don't know if this is necessarily the best anime to start with, but it is obviously, in my opinion, one of the greatest anime of all time. And at least for me personally, just one of the best. <laughs> you know what? I like, I don't even really want to explain the plot to you because I think you should be as surprised as I was because in that first episode, you get a reveal that I think most people who've watched the show uh, probably already knew about. I didn't know about it when I started watching the show and I was shocked. So if you don't know, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's set in our world and the main character is in high school, but it's also somewhat fantasy as well. There's no real magic, but the fantasy element relies heavily on the Chinese zodiac. And so it's like a little bit urban fantasy, I guess, if you wanted to describe it that way. It is primarily like a romance show, but honestly, more than anything, it's very much about trauma. Uh, this show is pretty hard to watch. You start it thinking it's gonna be this pretty lighthearted, kind of comedic, a little bit silly show about mostly these young kids, but it quickly, and I mean quickly, we get to like a certain episode and from there you realize how sad it is and it gets sadder and sadder and sadder and sadder until you're just crying and every single episode, um, which is what I love in a good TV show. You know, that's what I want in everything I watch. <laughs> if you start the show and you think that it's a little odd, I promise you, you just have to push through. It is a little odd. I will fully give you that, but you really do have to push through because it really does shift after a certain point and you finally get into the true depth of the show and you know, what the show really entails. I've rewatched it time and time again. For me, the first time watching it, I was like, this is hard. Like this is painful. It's a lot. Uh, so yeah, definitely look up content warnings if you do decide to watch it because it can be rough at times, um, but it is also extremely funny and it's extremely problematic also, but that's why we love them. Like it's just so messy and so many of the characters are horrible, absolutely detestable, and you just either love to hate them or just 
hate to love them, but I think that's what makes it so interesting. There are a couple relationships in here where I'm like, that is so incredibly horrible and problematic. And honestly, I just like have rewritten it in my head because I just refuse to accept that that's what they chose to do. The rest of the show means so much to me and it's just been so impactful, but I can choose to just, you know, ignore the things I don't like about it. But yes, that's Fruits Basket. You just have to watch it. You have to watch it. You have to push through the weird and understand that there are things about it that are going to make you question everything because it's just it's just the way it is that's what fruits basket does to you and then it just leaves you a sobbing mess on the floor but that's what we love that's what we want here <laughs> coming in in second place for me i believe this was also in second place when i made my original video it shifted for a while there because i watched other things like i watched fruits basket and i watched yona of the dawn and i was like i don't know maybe this has changed then i rewatched a few episodes and i was like you know what no it's just, there's something, there's something about this show, something about it, despite the fact that the animation isn't as good as newer shows like Fruits Basket or even Yona of the Dawn, the story has just latched on to my heart and soul and has not let go since the first time I watched it in a way that very few things do. But that is what I would consider my all-time favorite anime, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Yes, I know I have said before that Fruits Basket is now my all-time favorite anime. It's been a difficult debate, okay? And sometimes it switches depending on if I'm more in the mood for action adventure or more in the mood for romance. But I do think solidly overall, maybe objectively, I consider this one a bit better. I always have to make the distinction and be very clear if you haven't seen uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, there are two versions. There's the original version that was made which is just called Full Metal Alchemist and then there is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood which was made I don't remember how many years later but I think it was made in like 2009. That is the version I like. That is the version that is the true adaptation of the manga. The original anime is not a true adaptation of the manga. It's very different. The story at a certain point goes into some other thing that is entirely different from the original story. So yeah I have seen both. I hate the original one. I love Brotherhood, which is the true, true, real adaptation. If you like action and adventure and alchemy and commentary on politics and war, if you like feeling absolutely devastated and heartbroken, but also finding moments of humor and light, this show is perfect for you. Truly my only complaint about Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is that the animation is a little stale, like it's a little boring. There isn't much movement a lot of the time um, because I think one, they were trying to make it kind of quickly and there was already like the original adaptation and they were just basically trying to fully finish the entire like manga plot so the animation is not the best i would give anything for it to be reanimated like exactly the same just have like mappa or someone reanimate it with like the budget that we give to attack on titan or chainsaw man or something give it to full metal alchemist brotherhood and give us a remake with that animation because I would die. I would die. That would be so good. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter. It's still a fantastic show. I love all of the characters in this show so, so much, but Roy Mustang is my emotional support war criminal and I would do anything for him. <laughs> it's like one of the most popular anime of all time and I think rightfully so because it's that good and it's just some of the best storytelling I think I've ever seen. The messages in this story are incredible. The storytelling itself is incredible. So yeah, if you've still never watched it, please do. You could start with this. This is a great anime to start with. This was the anime that got me into anime too. Um, so I think it's a perfect place to start. Always will recommend and tell people to watch Brotherhood. Please watch Brotherhood. It's just so good. <laughs> Okay, and then lastly, my all-time favorite TV show, which I have debated many times in my life and thought, oh, maybe this will top it. Oh, I think I might like this more. But ultimately, nothing can touch this show. Nothing can touch it. And that is, of course, Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm currently re-watching it right now. I just finished books one and two. I'm about to start book three again. And like, truly, nothing is Avatar and nothing ever will be, <laughs> at least not for me. I've talked about this show countless times too, but I started watching this like as it was airing when I was a child. So I literally grew up watching it. I remember watching the series premiere and the series finale live. So like it's been a part of my life since then. And I have rewatched it at least once every single year since it was completed. <laughs> so yeah, I've never not had this show in my life. So nostalgia is a huge factor in why it's so important to me. But also I just think it's one of the 
best written shows of all time. And I think a lot of people would agree with that. I don't really need to explain Avatar to you all. You all know, uh, you all know why it's so good. You know why it's so important. You know why it's just the masterpiece that it is. And I honestly do think it's the type of show that gets better with time. The older I get, the more and more I feel like I appreciate this show, not just for the fact that I had something like this when I was young, but also I feel like I can find new things in it to appreciate as I get older. New messages I feel like I learn from it every time I rewatch it. And it's just one of those things that's so well crafted that you will never get tired of it and you will never stop learning from it. And I think that's the true mark of incredible storytelling and truly exceptional art. And that's what I think this show is. I know people are gonna ask because everyone always asks, Zuko is my favorite character, but I love all of them honestly equally. I love every single thing about this show. It is my everything. I would die for Avatar. I'm so sorry if I've ever doubted it being in this number one spot, but truly nothing, nothing can ever take its place. Nothing will ever be this. <laughs> All right, so those are my top five favorite TV shows. And now moving on from TV shows, we're gonna talk about my top five favorite movies. I think most of you will probably know my top three because I've talked about them a lot, but the other two are kind of interchangeable and it really depends on my mood and what I've been watching recently, but these two are pretty solidly always on the list. Okay, coming in at number five, this is technically more than one movie. It's a whole trilogy of movies, but I, I can't separate them. To me, it's just like one entity. And to be honest with you, every time I watch them, I pretty much always watch them back to back to back. So it has just meshed into this one like nine hour, basically giant movie to me. Um, and that is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> I can't count the number of times I've watched these movies. Endless, truly endless. Again, something I've been watching since I was really, really young, like since these movies came out pretty much, I've been watching them almost every year and I have loved every single rewatch more than the last. I'm a rewatcher to my core, as I've mentioned. And when I can rewatch something that many times and never ever, Ever, ever get tired of it. To me, that is the ultimate sign that it is an absolute favorite film of all time. And that's what these are to me. They're such comfort movies. Anytime I'm overwhelmed or stressed, just like all of my favorite TV shows and especially Avatar, I rewatch that anytime I'm sad and it always helps me. The Lord of the Rings movies do the same thing for me. I just think they're also fantastically made. I think anyone who's watched these movies would agree. They are so well made. They are so entertaining from start to finish. I know people get bored of them and can't watch all of them back to back or don't like the extended editions, but I am to my core an extended editions girly, okay? I watch all of them back to back to back, extended editions exclusively. I want the full three hours or like more than three hours. Some of them are really long. <laughs> I want that full three hours of content from each one, okay? I love it. I could sit there endlessly and watch these. They're the type of movies that I've seen so many times where I can literally quote them word for word as I watch them to the point where I'll annoy the people who are with me and I have to hold myself back. But yeah, absolutely had to include them on this list because those movies mean the world to me. Okay, coming in at number four on my list, this is one that has crept its way up here and I didn't even think I was gonna like it as much as I did when I first watched it, but I have not stopped thinking about it since the first time I've seen it and I've seen it twice since then because it's just that good. And that is Little Women 2019, the Greta Gerwig version. Oh my god. <laughs> this movie is pure perfection as far as an adaptation goes for me. It does deviate a little bit from parts of the book and it's not 100% a pure adaptation, but I think it's a perfect adaptation because it sticks to the core of the story. And also I think that Greta Gerwig fully understands Louisa May Alcott as a person, as an author, so well and so deeply that it adds so much more to the adaptation as well. And specifically for me, Joe's characterization in this movie I think was just incredible, impeccable. Every single scene she has makes me sob every time I watch it, every time I think about it, because it's one so well acted and so well written and so true to the heart of the story, like I said. My favorite line in this entire movie, I have several, but the one that I always go back to is the, you'll be bored of him in two years, but will be interesting forever. I remember the first time I heard that, I like immediately started crying because it just struck me so, so powerfully. It was Oh my God, I get chills every time I think about it. <laughs> it's shot on film, so it's beautiful to watch aesthetically. The acting from every single one of the actors is phenomenal. And the directing is obviously fantastic. And everything about this movie just worked for me. It's everything I like in a film. It's emotional and heartfelt, yet still optimistic and happy at times. And it's just, oh, it's a perfect film. It's a perfect film. Okay, coming in at number three on my list is Your Name. The first time I watched it, 
it like changed me. <laughs> this movie is so unbelievably beautiful. Like it is exceptionally beautiful to watch. Even if you don't like the story, I think you could just appreciate the incredible artwork that's in front of you for two and a half hours. I don't know how long it is, but it's just so visually stunning. That's one of the best things about it for sure. But I also personally love the story. I'm sure most of you probably know about it or have heard about it or have seen it. But if you don't, it's a romance story about these two teenagers who end up switching bodies and uh, living as each other, getting to know each other that way as well. So a little Freaky Friday, but not entirely that direction. And that's all you really need to know about it. I don't think you need to know anything else about it. You really just need to go into this movie with zero expectations. Don't look up a thing about it and just watch it and experience it for yourself. To me, this movie is so romantic and just so heart-wrenching and just everything I want in a good film. Like when I sit down to watch a movie, this is what I think of. Like this is the experience I want to go through especially for the first time. It's the type of thing that when you watch it the first time, you're gonna wanna watch it again because it, again, can't say anything, but you're gonna wanna rewatch it. <laughs> and I just utterly, utterly love it. Okay, coming in at number two on my list, we have Pride and Prejudice 2005. I don't need to explain anything about the movie. Just like insert the hand flex scene. That's all you need to know, right? That's all you need to know. <laughs> what is there to say? Again, another adaptation that is not a perfect adaptation. It definitely changes things from the original story, leaves certain things out, but it understands the core of the story and I think that's the most essential thing. Honestly, sometimes I do prefer this adaptation to Pride and Prejudice the book because it's not my favorite Jane Austen book. I truly just have an even better time watching this movie than I do reading that book, which is why I say that. The costumes, the casting, the acting, the directing, the fact that it's shot on film. Again, love a good movie shot on film. I think we should bring that back. Do more of that, please. It's so unexpectedly funny as well. And everything about it is just everything I want in a movie. As you can clearly tell, I love anything that has a bit of romance in it. And to me, this is just pure perfection in that sense. I love a good period piece and I love a good romantic period piece. So this is the elite one. It is the elite. We all know, everyone loves this movie. <laughs> okay, and then coming in at number one, my favorite movie of all time, and that is Howl's Moving Castle. Oh my God. First of all, how does one explain Howl's Moving Castle? I can't really, you can't explain Howl's Moving Castle. It's not the type of thing that you can give someone a description of. It's just the type of thing you have to experience. Honestly, I could include a good majority of the Ghibli movies on my favorites list, like Spirited Away is another favorite, Castle in the Sky, Whisper of the Heart. I love so many of them, but this one definitely stands out to me above all of them just because this was not my first Ghibli movie, but one of the first ones I watched when I was a little bit older and I think I had more appreciation for the movies. And this one has just stuck with me since I first watched it. This movie I think combines everything that is in all of the other movies that I mentioned that I love and just elevates it. It's missing nothing for me. An absolutely beautiful soundtrack, which I forgot to mention with Your Name is another thing that I loved. That soundtrack is one of my all-time favorites and Howl's Moving Castle is another one of my all-time favorite soundtracks. Beautiful animation animation, incredible romance, great storytelling. We have some found family in there, a grumpy old lady, magic and mystery and heartbreak and happiness and everything, just everything. It's the perfect film. It's the perfect film. If you've never watched a Studio Ghibli film, I highly recommend any of them, honestly. Um, I don't think there's a best place to start even. You could start anywhere. Personally, I'd recommend Howl's Moving Castle because it's my favorite, but you definitely should watch them and you should definitely watch this one if you still haven't watched it. I know it's incredibly popular. Most of you have probably seen it and I hope that you have, but if you haven't, please go watch it because this movie is like the number one. Like if you don't watch anything else I recommended besides Avatar, which you absolutely have to watch also if you haven't, you have to watch Howl's Moving Castle, okay? Cause it's like to my core, it's ingrained into my personality at this point. But there you all have it. That is it for my list of all time favorite movies and TV series. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. This was so much fun for me to put together. I have so many other videos I wanna make about all of the movies and shows and everything that I've watched that I really, really love. So if you have any specific suggestions, please let me know and I'd be happy to make them. Don't forget to check out the A Clockwork Reader Film and TV Journal, which will be released on June 27th. Pre-order links are in the description box below if you want to record and track all of the movies and shows and everything that you watch in one place. All the links are down below. And again, thank you all so much for your support. I hope you're as excited as I am. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But again, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.